Hey guys, Alex here. So in the previous episode, we actually talked about some basic endgame maneuvers in order to close out games. Today, I'd like to talk about uh, even number theory, or otherwise known as parity. So this concept is exceptionally useful when it comes to endgame situations where the situation is a little tighter and the game is probably going to end with a tighter margin. Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about even number theory or otherwise known as simply just parity. So parity is basically defined as the right to the last move on the board or for the game or the right to the last few moves. So when a game uh, becomes pretty one-sided, uh, one would expect maybe uh, one player to actually gain the last few moves. So if he really captures the last few moves, uh, it's almost guaranteed that he would uh, win in most situations. And of course, having the right to the last move uh, becomes uh, extremely critical as the number of this on the board begins to grow. Uh, each move is more likely to actually flip more this towards the end. And usually just the right to the last move would actually guarantee a win as long as you protect that right. So let's just move on to the topics that we would like to cover today. So today I would like to talk about natural parity, playing with parity, and snatching parity. So over here this is a picture of me versus uh, Marcus uh, at the Otello World Cup 2013 in Japan. So now let's talk about natural parity. So in essence, the starting position of uh, the, any given Othello game is as this uh, screenshot that you see over here. So you basically start off with 60 empty squares with black going first and white going next. So assuming if a game does not involve any pass of turns, one would expect that naturally white uh, being the player who goes second would actually get the right to the last move uh, because there isn't any change in uh, turns or moves. So of course, white would then enjoy this thing called natural parity. So basically, white being uh, the second player to go uh, is usually um, often that players who are of the same level uh, or similar level actually values white slightly more uh, in any given game. Uh, so if you see World Championship semifinals where there are a best of three game situation and if the first two games end off with maybe 1-1, one, one, the person who has the right to choose the color more often than not actually chooses white for this reason. So usually when you are about the same level as your opponent, uh, usually that natural parity just somehow gives you that additional edge in the game to actually uh, maybe just secure parity to ed edge out your opponent in the final outcome. So that's the importance of natural parity and basically uh, the reason why uh, some of the players actually value white slightly more than black. So earlier we actually talked about natural parity. So let's consider this end game situation whereby it's white's turn to play. And let's consider the importance of parity. So the rule of thumb for playing with parity to begin with is actually to play, to always look to play towards odd regions and avoid playing into even regions. So over here in the lower right, we actually have four squares, which makes it basically an even region. And the lower left, we also have a two square region, which makes it also an even region. And to the top left, we have a three square region where it is actually an odd region. And right now, um, based on the rules of the game, after black and white has exchanged moves to this point, without any pass in turn, which is typical for any given games between two uh, similar level players, you would then uh, consider as white, instead of playing to maybe a7 and giving up a8, that allows black to consolidate that position. Another option that you don't want to consider is to play towards an even region over here, which basically, if you play g7, gives black an easy corner with also parity and consolidates the dis in that region. So on the flip side, 
what you actually want to do is actually play into an odd region so you sort of have the last move to that region and protects parity and potentially also the last moves in every other region. So let's just move right into b2 which is the only move possible for white at this point in time. Even though it is an x square, the importance in this endgame position is actually to protect parity. So let's see parity in action. So when white plays b2, basically he closes up all the odd regions that are available on the board and just maintains only even number regions. So wherever that black or his opponent plays to, he would just simply respond to that area and protect parity. So let's say if black were to play a8 over here, white would simply then just play into a7 to protect parity and just follow with the even region. So when black goes, white goes. So that's a very simple 1-2 concept. And over here, now that white is threatening the a1 corner, if black chooses to play a1 and defend the corner, all you have to do is just simply respond to b1 and just protect parity that way. And now all that's left is actually an even region, which is the four square that we talked about earlier in the bottom right. And black would then have to try to play a move. So if black, given the choice between g7 and h7, perhaps g7 could be slightly better. h7 could bypass parity, but Let's, for the sake of an example, let's talk about black playing g7. So now that black played g7, this is an odd region for white to pick up the remaining this and also to secure parity because this is an odd region. You would expect white to play one move and then black to play another move and then finally white actually gets the last chunk of this by making the last move. So let's just talk about white taking h8, a diagonal cut to the corner and basically giving black two options where if black plays h7 he picks up plus 5 and he loses 7 this so using a plus minus counting method black playing h7 would be a plus 5 minus 7 so that gives an overall aggregate of minus 2 and if black were to play g8 right now white plays h7 which is basically a plus 1 minus 4. That is an overall aggregate of minus 3. So it only makes sense for black to actually pick up h7 and finally end off the game with white, completing the game with parity and playing to g8. So over here you can see that white wins 37 to 27. So now let's just move back to the previous position before we played b2, which is actually the correct way of playing towards parity and also relying on white's natural parity. Let's just assume that uh, instead of playing b2, we actually do start off with an even region, which is probably not the, the way to go. So what happens is if white takes g7, so what happens is instead of uh, actually having that even region, and, and the access to an odd region, white sacrifices his own parity, which uh, may not be the best uh, option for sure, but let us just illustrate that in uh, terms of the consequences of sacrificing that parity. So instead of white capturing it, black now has the chance to actually jump into this odd region because the bottom right odd region is not a region that white is able to access at this moment. So let's say if black were to counter with b2, to secure parity by playing into an odd region first instead of an even region, white would naturally grab the corner instead of giving up the corner with a7, white would take the corner with a1. And black essentially takes b1, which is the last move in the top left region, and secures parity to the top left. Now let us see the power of parity in action. So right now white only has one option but to play a7. And once white plays a7, you would realize that the entire board or the remaining four squares are actually essentially split into two different regions, which are a one this region and a three this region, both of which are odd regions and only black has access to. So this means that black would be able to capture parity. So if black were to start off with a8 and take a corner and secure that, there is no 
legal move for white to the lower right, and therefore a pass move is declared. So black would then have another option to play one more move to that odd region. Let's say if black plays h8 and flips the disc in the diagonal cut, white would then be given two options. It's either a plus 1 minus 4 or a plus 1 minus 11. So obviously white would then choose to play h7, which is a plus 1 minus 4. And finally, of course, black would then be able to secure parity, which is the last move of the game, and take the last few discs and win by 37 to 27. So in this case, you can see in this alternate sequence where white chooses to ignore parity, white, instead of winning 10 discs, uh, he actually loses by 10 discs. So that can actually make a huge difference in terms of the outcome. So now let's talk about snatching parity. So if you were black and you played in a normal game where there wasn't any pass of moves, you might come to a situation in this case where you basically have an even region to the bottom right, another even region to the bottom left, and you have somewhat of an even region to the top left. So basically there are 10 more squares on the board to play and you're kind of uh, wondering how you can actually end the game nicely. So since you are black and you do not have natural parity, it's quite within expectations that you actually end up in a situation where you are somewhat stuck in even regions all over the board. So how can you actually snatch parity? So in the top region over here, where white has essentially created this empty square gap uh, for himself at d1, over here, which is probably a result of a certain way that the mid game was played out. So this at times might actually uh, show up in certain games. So how black can actually try to uh, snatch parity over here is basically utilizing the same principles that we talked about earlier by playing into an odd region first. So at the bottom right is a very clear cut four square region that is basically even, and the bottom left as well is a two square region. But the top part, even though it's a collective even square region with four squares per se, there is a split because this D1 is not accessible by white. And instead, this becomes a three square uh, odd region that black could then consider playing. So if you were to try to attempt to snatch parity, black would then start off with the X square to B2. So if black plays b2, naturally white would respond by playing the corner to a1. And over here, black can then jump into b1, which forms somewhat of a wedge. And you would then realize that essentially after that exchange, white is unable to play to d1, and therefore would have to play into the other even regions that are to the bottom. So naturally, if white wants to extend its influence from the corner, it's, it just gained. So he would then play a7. Now over here, a7 has created a8, which is not accessible by white. And instead, to capture the corner, black would have to create access, and naturally black would jump into d1, which is the square that is not accessible by white. So now that black plays into d1, you would then realize that white has no other choice but to play into this even region, and essentially hand the parity across to black. So let's say if white were to play to g7, black would then play a8, and therefore white with no more legal move would then have to pass. And when white plays, and when white passes, black would be able to take the move to an odd region, and therefore finish the game with a corner. And with white taking either one of these moves, let's say if white were to play h7 and black h takes g8, and black would then win with parity. So essentially, one of the ways, one of the most direct ways to actually snatching parity is to capitalize of such one square gaps that your opponent might have actually created during the mid game. So let's take a look at a situation where snatching parity may fail. So if you were to instead choose to actually fill up the spot to d1 and just take that spot, this would then result in white being able to access an odd region square. So if white takes b2 over here, black essentially is unable to overcome parity and therefore loses parity. So if black were to take 
A1 and secure the corner and white takes B1, black would then be somewhat stuck. So if black takes A8 and white takes A7, if black were to take H7 and white takes H8 in response, black plays the last, his last move to G7 and finally white captures G8 with a 33-31 to 31 win with parity. So if black is unable to figure out how to snatch parity, he might turn a win into a loss. So snatching parity is therefore critical to ensuring your win. So I hope you liked this introduction to even number theory and parity. Thank you for watching my video again, and I'll see you in the next episode.